Managing multiple Jira projects is kind of like herding cats, if those cats were sending you 100 Slack messages a day. All jokes aside, setting up your Jira correctly from day one can be the difference between having a really, really great experience with Jira or absolutely hating it. And in this video, I'm gonna give you four tips, four things to be thinking about as you go and reflect on your Jira journey. If you're frustrated with the way Jira works or you just don't feel like Jira is working effectively or efficiently for you and your team, then definitely take a look at the four points we're gonna be covering in this video because they're going to be designed to help you maximize and get the most out of Jira and maybe also help you discover some wrong ways, if that's the word, of how you're using Jira and help you understand why Jira is just not working the way it should because of some maybe misinformed information or decisions that you did early on in your Jira career. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a like, and a special shout out to the sponsor of this video, Unido, the ultimate platform for bringing all teams together under one house. Let me tell you a little bit about the video sponsor. Unido offers a true two-way sync, including historical data right out of the box. Their no-code fully extensible iPad supports roughly 60 connectors, making cross-tool collaboration seamless. Unlike alternatives, Unido is more cost-effective and effortlessly scales with your needs. If you're looking to share automatically back and forth between Jira and other tools, make sure you give Unido a try. Now let's jump into the video. So the first place that I wanna start off with is your projects. When you're looking at all the Jira projects that you have, one of the reasons why you might have some frustrations or Jira might not be working for you is because you might have a hodgepodge of company-managed software, company-managed business, team-managed software, team-managed business, product, service. There's a couple of different options here. And if this is you where you just have a mix of everything and if your teams are expected to collaborate together, this is your first problem. And that's because you're gonna wanna have all your teams operating under the same type of project type, okay? What I mean by that is ideally, this is ideally, you want everybody at a minimum to be in a company managed project. Now, it doesn't have to be a software template. That's more of a difference between Agile and Scrum, software being Agile and business being non-Agile, right? But you definitely want everybody on a company managed template because if you have any team managed projects like this, team managed projects are inherently designed to be siloed. They're designed so that if your team doesn't know a single thing about how to manage a Jira project, they can get in very quickly and be very productive very quickly. But, 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 that means that any changes, any fields, permissions, um, issue types, all of that stuff, the workflows, the statuses, those boards, all of those are self-contained to that project. So the moment you wanna scale, the moment you want team A and B and C and D, E, F, G, H, all of them working together, you have to make 20 different changes. And that's not healthy, that's not good, right? It's hard, it's challenging. And that's probably why you're suffering in Jira right now. And so the best way to do this is you want to have company managed projects because these projects give us the ability to scale. They give us the ability to share our resources like the workflows, like those permissions, like those fields, right? And when you can set up a standard, a standard set of statuses, a standard set of fields, a standard set of required fields, then we can set those settings for all of our company managed projects with just a few clicks and make everybody start speaking the same language. And a special shout out again to our sponsor because this problem is also greatly reduced the moment you start bringing in your other teammates, right? If there aren't other tools like Asana or Monday or Smartsheets or other tools, then by using something like Unido, we can bring them in and have everybody operating under one house, which is this Jira centralized thing, which is really what you want to do because Jira is the most ideal tool in the world. But that is the first problem we want to address. You're probably using different Jira project types, which is leading to different types of experiences for your team. And if you're frustrated that you just can't share this work easily, it's that team managed project. You definitely want to bump yourself up to company managed projects. Now, unfortunately, the conversion between team to company is not trivial. Again, use that link tree down below. I can definitely help you get that set up, but it's not something for the faint of heart either. So if you're already on that team managed journey and you wanna pivot, definitely get a hold of me so I can help you out. Now let's go to point number two and let's talk about project permissions. So when we're looking at our Jira projects, there's different permission settings. Now, if you're in a team managed project, access is managed again at that project level and for each Jira project, for each team managed Jira project, you have to go in and add your users. Now, if you are in a company managed project, 
we have something called a permission scheme. So there's a permissions for each Jira project. And I want to call out a couple of things that are going to make your life way, way easier. First, a couple of things you got to know. Number one, see the title here, default software scheme. Every time that you create a software project, a company managed software project, let me be very specific, then it will leverage this default software scheme right here. This is the default one that just comes with it. Okay. If you ever make a company managed business project, there's a different permission scheme that is default for all of those. So if you're using both and you're wondering why things are not working, check your templates. Now it is possible for you to override a permission scheme from one project type and apply the other scheme. And so that's totally doable. Just know that when the moment you create the project, they're going to have one of two templates. Additionally, if you do make changes to your permission scheme and you decide to make your own permission scheme, know that any new project you create, you're going to have to go and apply that permission scheme after the fact. It's not automatic. Only this default software one, and I think it's called just default permission scheme, are the two that are applied to every new project. Second point I want to make is this browse projects. So the browse project is the most important permission of them all because this gives a user the ability to see the project so that when the user clicks on projects and they're looking at all the Jira projects available to them, if they don't meet the qualification over here on the right, they're not going to see this project or that project in their list. And so this can be a problem. And this leads to a lot of frustration as well, because if you're expecting your teams to work collaboratively, they most likely need to be able to access each other's Jira's. Now, again, if you're in a team managed project, your problem is just compounded exponentially by how many Jira projects you have, because for each one, you got to go into each one and update and add people. And it's just a big mess. But in these company managed projects, we can actually apply a role based or a group based, or if we want to be really dangerous, we can do a specific user in here. And so there's a lot of different ways to manage this. But the key takeaway here is you want your teammates, the appropriate number of teammates to have browse permissions so that they can access different projects. And as you bring users from different tools like your Asana, your Mondays, your, your Smartsheets using Unidos platform, and then even more important, we want to make sure that the right people, maybe all licensed users, there's an actual permission called any logged in user, which basically means as long as you can log into Jira, you can access the project. That's way too extreme in my opinion, but those are options as well. But you want to make sure you get your browse projects correct. I recommend role based, but if you really need all your teams to work together, I would recommend putting everybody in a group and then putting that group in here and then everything's going to work out really, really well. Now let's go to tip number three and we want to talk about tracking our work. So the first two things you need to do is you need to make sure you're on those company managed projects and you need to make sure that access is a little bit more loosely enforced, right? You want more people to be able to access than not. And that is because once we can see the projects, then we want to be able to see the issues or at least the metrics or data behind those issues, right? And so in order for this next part to work correctly, we want to talk about working with filters so that your filters and your dashboards can appropriately report data. But the problem is when you go to Jira and you save your filter here, by default, these things are set up to be private. Now I've updated my permission so that it's open to the entire organization, but by default, these filters are private. So another big challenge that companies have is that they create filters and they create dashboards to share the data, but those dashboards and those filters are automatically set to private. And so you just add to the frustration of this Jira thing sucks. So just make sure that whenever you're saving a filter, you set your viewers worst case, or I guess best case, depends on how you want to view this, right? But ideally you want to open it up to the right people. Again, everything you always want to have the right people in mind. I'm a huge fan of if everybody needs to see it, your C-suite, your stakeholders, everybody that's in Jira needs to see it, open it up to my organization. Otherwise, again, leverage those groups that we use in our permissions or at the very least open it up to whoever has access to those projects, which is again, going to be all those groups if you follow the last step. But what you should not do is leave it private because then that's just for your eyes only. And doing specific users can be annoying if you have 50 users you got to share it with. So the first three are always my top go-to option. Just make sure you click on add and then save and you're going to be good. Now on the dashboard side, you're going to do something very, very similar. On the dashboard, you're going to essentially create a dashboard. And when you do that, as you can see here, again, you're set to private by default. So make sure you open this up to the same group, same project or same organization so that these dashboards are opened up and then everybody can see them. So that's going to be tip number three. Now, finally, I want to talk about automation rules. 
oftentimes in Jura, we have access to the project, right? We have the right template. We have company managed projects. We are creating a lot of stories. We have a lot of epics. We have now ensured that our team can see those issues. And we have now ensured that our team can see data and metrics off of those issues. But when you start looking at the data, you're going to see that a lot of issues are like in to do. You're going to see that a lot of issues are stuck in progress. You're going to see that there's a lot of issues that just never got resolved. And the last and final tip that I want to talk to you about managing these cross-functional projects and managing this multitude of projects is that you want to remove as much friction from the user. You want to remove as many things as possible from the user's plate when it comes to interacting with Jira because Jira is only going to be as good as how we update it. And if your users are not updating Jira, then we're going to have a really, really hard time here. And so the last tip is to make sure that you're leveraging automation rules. Every single project has the ability to set up some automation rules. Now, how many automation rules do you can set up are going to be dependent on your pricing plan. And so make sure you're mindful of that. Depending on which version of Jira you have, you're going to have a different limit on automation rules. But you should, in general, be making automation rules that can basically help you automate things. For example, when all child issues are completed, then you can close the parent. This is great when you have an epic with 20 stories. Once all those 20 stories go to done, then the epic itself can go to done because oftentimes teams work on the stories because that's what they're working on sprint to sprint, but then they forget to update the epic. And now our epic, which is something maybe your stakeholders care about, aren't being updated and they're not in sync with what's going on at the child level. So these automation rules are going to help you keep your parent and child in sync. Now, there's a bunch of different things, right? We can create pages for Confluence. We can uh, basically copy field data from an epic down to the child or from the child up to the epic. So if you want to keep things in sync, look at automation rules to help you and your team effortlessly be updating Jira without somebody manually having to click into a thousand different places. And if you're a development team and you're using something like GitHub or Bitbucket, then you can also set up automation rules so that when your team creates a branch, the ticket goes to in progress. When they open up a pull request, your ticket goes to like code complete or code review or something like that, right? And when the PR is approved and it's merged and it's all good, all your unit tests and everything checked out, you can just have that ticket go to close automatically. And it just happens so effortlessly, but it's only possible with those automation rules. So to recap, if you want to manage multiple projects, multiple teams, all inside of Jira effectively, then these four tips are definitely going to help you out. Number one, make sure you're using those company managed projects. Try to avoid team managed whenever possible. Set up a good permission scheme because now that you have these projects that are a lot more scalable, you're going to want to make sure you have consistent access and consistent settings. And so take advantage of those permission schemes. Three, when you're creating those filters and dashboards, make sure you're sharing them with either the project, the group, or the organization so that everybody can benefit from being able to see that situational awareness you're trying to provide in those dashboards. And finally, leverage automation rules because garbage in is garbage out and if nobody's going to be updating those Jira tickets, it's not going to do any of us any help. So make sure you are using automation rules to make that more efficient or more seamless. And finally, make sure you consider using something like Unido if your teams are in different tools because bringing everybody under one house is the most ideal thing, but we're creatures of habits and we like to be in our own tools and we like to do what's comfortable for us, but having a solution like Unido allows us to bring everybody under one roof, under one place, have a consistent process and experience there, but still give everybody the flexibility and freedom to use the tool that they're comfortable with. So those are some four tips. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a like. Special shout out again to Unido for making this video possible. And finally, if you need any help with any of this, this can be a major endeavor. I am available to help you out. Link in the description down below. Jira is not cheap at all. And so you want to make sure that you're maximizing that return on investment. Let me help you make sure that you're using Jira correctly. I will go through these settings with you. And I have way more tips as well that I did not cover in this video. So let me help you out. Get a hold of me down in that link tree down below. And I'll look forward to helping you out in the future. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.